Previously on AgentPalmer.com, Objectivity Wins in Dayton's World War II Analysis, Blood, Tears, and Folly, Edge of the World Broadcast Season 2, Listening is Advised, and as it turns out, many of you shared your collections with me after last episode, and we're all collectors of some sort. This is The Palmer Files, Episode 63, with Janae Ivory, who you may not know yet, but who is co-hosting the Girls Go Book Steve podcast, and who's preparing to break into all the mediums. We discuss on-screen representation, why can't all fandoms get along, what is canon, writing, reviewing, captions, and much, much more. Are you ready? Let's do the show! Welcome to the Palmer Files. I'm your host, Jason Sturzik, also known as Agent Palmer, and on this 63rd episode is Janae Ivory. Janae co-hosts Girls Go Books Deep, a podcast with her friend and fellow co-host Amanda Goldstein, and hopes that one day you'll also know her from screens big and small. I ran into Janae and Girls Go Books Deep on Twitter, and as a former mentor once proved, you don't need to have your best friend or even someone you know as a guest on your podcast to have a great conversation. Thank you, Mr. Markham. Because had I not invited Janae on, I would have missed out, and you, dear listener, would have missed out too. We go everywhere, from representation of gender and race on all of the screens to what is canon. From Marvel vs. DC to Why Can't We All Get Along? Then we just talk about how we consume our media, binge a series vs. appointment viewing. Plus, Janae takes us on a personal journey of how she arrived where she is, where she is headed, and how it all hinged on just one decision so far. All of that and much more are headed your way. But before we get going, remember that if you want to discuss this episode as you listen or afterwards, you could tweet me at Agent Palmer, my guest Janae Ivory at J Ivory, that's J I V E R Y, her show Girls Go Books Deep at GG underscore Books Deep, and this show at The Palmer Files. You can find Janae's podcast at girlsgobooksdeep.com or wherever good podcasts can be listened to. Don't forget, you can see all of my writings and rantings on agentpalmer.com. And of course, email can be sent to thepalmerfiles at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's get into it. Janae, I I have a very serious question to start with. um, All right. Which is, you are a woman of color Mm -hmm. in podcasting. And, Mm -hmm. well... I champion all voices, your voice probably not heard that much in podcasting. Unless you're looking for it, which only recently, because we've been doing the research on podcasting, trying to find our audience, what's out there versus, you know, what we could bring to the table. Um, And only recently I came across an article that had like the top 10 black nerd podcast shows but it is very few and far between so it's just another reason why me and amanda want to do this show because we wanted to have our voices out there give a different perspective that's unique but also relatable in the same sense of you know me being a woman of color You don't see a lot of us on the front lines of comics and movies and, you know, fantasies and all this stuff talking about it. But we are out there. There are so many people that I've met in my life or just through passing of talking about our favorite new show, Witcher or whatever. And you're just realizing, like, there's a lot more people who look like me who enjoy the same things I do. So so. Do you look for in in your shows, obviously, you know, what's created is what's created, but do you Mm -hmm. look for representation or like, does it, I I ask because like, so I am, I am, I'm a, just a white Jew. Okay. Like that's, Mm -hmm. I, I, so, so my representation is, 
in the context. Like I can't look on the screen and go, that person's Jewish. Like that doesn't mm-hmm. exist for me. Um, right. But I also don't seek it out um, because for mm-hmm. me, um, and I, I understand I'm coming from a very different place, but like for me, it's never mm-hmm. been important for me to see a Jew on the screen. Right. Um, for me. Um, but it seems like we're at a point where that conversation is changing mm-hmm. and people want to see more of themselves. And as people right. realize that not everybody's the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you like, does it suck that you have to seek out things that reflect you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it does. I mean, for me, I want genuine representation, not something that, you know, this is the trend at the moment. Okay. Um, we actually do talk about this in a couple of our episodes where it's like, we want the actor who's going to play that character the best. It could be that it is a white man. If it is okay, that's fine. If that's the best person to play that role. But also if it's a Mexican woman or a black woman or whatever, then that's fine too. I think Eternals, the movie Eternals, if anyone has watched that, is the best uh, example I could give of where they changed a couple of the characters. But when you go and you watch that movie and you see those actors, it's like, okay, maybe that was the best actor to play that role. And the gender and, you know, their cultural background really didn't matter. It was more about the character. So that leads me to this, because I've Mm -hmm. I've I've. I'm probably not the person anybody should ask this question to, but I end up having these conversations about uh, gender swapping and race swapping. Mm -hmm. Um, And to me, um, and I'll just brass tacks to me, Mm -hmm. gender and race swapping feels lazy. Um, Okay. I see where you're going. I, I want a strong black female to portray a strong black female character, not, Right. To step into the role of yeah. some other thing. Um, I I want a like Black Panther is a great example, right? I yeah. want I want Black Panther to be Black Panther. I don't want a black actor to step into the role of Superman because while it's happened in the comics, and I understand that, right. I, yeah. I, I I I you know why are we? It it feels just like um, I don't know what it like. It feels disingenuous. I, I, I yes, I think. One of my biggest things and another thing, me and Amanda, we constantly talk about these things because she is a white woman. I am a black woman. So we see a lot of things from different perspectives. And it's like, for me, to an extent, like if we're going to, you know, create that strong black woman character, then create that strong black woman character. Like you said, you know, there is a black Superman. Okay, then that's in a different universe. That's a different character. So we don't have to change our Clark Kent just because there is, you know, a black Superman, just like there's a Peter Parker and there's a Miles Morales. Those are two different, complete different Spider-Mans, but they can coexist and they still have representation there. Yes. Yes. So it's one of those things that I think you can't just go with the trend. You really need to look at it, look at the culture they're portraying, like in Black Panther. Obviously, I think there should not be anyone other than that color playing that part. Cause I mean, (laughs) it's just immersed in everything that color brings, you know, to the screen. So it wouldn't be right to put another color in that role. Yeah. So it's like one of those things It's like, if it's true to the story and the plot and the culture that you're trying to portray on screen, then make sure it's the right one. But if none of that matters, then anyone should be able to play that character yeah and you you and i come from like a a source material background right like Mm -hmm. we we pay attention to the comics and the books and Mm -hmm. you know it's not just about what happens to be on the screen at the time and right to diverge a bit from from the serious talk do you how do you feel about canon because like to me um we're coming off of the heels um, as we record this of Hawkeye and yeah. a lot of this discussion about whether the television show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is now canon or not. Oh my and God. to me, yeah. I don't understand how 
it's important for anyone to try and write out or write in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to what's already happened. Like, it's already happened. Right. Uh, it's done. I will say this, because um, I started watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the beginning, and they they made it a part of the MCU. Yes. They act. Yeah, in the first season. Do you remember? So you had, do you, did you watch during season two? Uh, I want to say yes. Because season two was, to me, and I know everybody has problems with Disney and the whole like big yeah. screen, small screen stuff. But what mm-hmm. they did leading into Captain America Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. um, where if you didn't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. the week before. Right. And you, you didn't, didn't watch, know. Yeah. You didn't know. So for people to say that it's not canon, I'm just like, you didn't watch the show, obviously. Like, what are you talking about? It, like, you had Sith from Thor show up in season one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that doesn't belong anymore. Or we're in a different universe. What's going on? It, like this. It, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that blows my mind. It blows my mind. I, I just I feel like we're all like, th- th- like, I understand clickbait. I mean, I don't yeah. like it and I don't, I try not to participate right. in it. But I, I but I, I feel like everybody we're having the wrong conversations. Um, or it feels like, you know, when something's trending on any social media platform, it feels like it's always the, like you're okay. That's fine. We can talk about Spider-Man. We can talk about agents of shield. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're having a talking about removing it from the mythos seems like the wrong conversation to have. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Cause I definitely remember watching that show and. Being like, okay, this is another thing that they've thrown in between each movie that you could kind of keep in the universe and you're constantly thinking about the MCU, which I think was the whole point of it. Yeah. So you're never technically out of it. You're always waiting for the next thing. And now it, it's kind of gotten out of control. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, yeah. Do, do you, um, I I I know you probably do, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do do you uh, have a fan leanings DC or Marvel? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I can say this with confidence because it's me and Amanda. Uh, we are both DC girls. Okay. Um, my favorite superhero is Batman. I know. Um. But I do have a love for Marvel at the same time. Like I grew up reading X-Men comics, watching the shows like my favorite X-Men is Storm, obviously. Um, But like I can appreciate both because they both have different representations and different things that they tackle. Um, But I do like DC because it's a little bit darker, a little bit rougher. So I yeah it th- what you just said mm-hmm. is my argument period right like yeah. <laughs> Star Wars and Star Trek both have different they're not telling the same story mm-hmm. and Marvel and DC are not trying to do like like to I guess to the outs to, to somebody who's not in the comic or superhero vein at all they go oh right. people with superheroes but they're not trying to do the same thing by any stretch. So mm-hmm. I, I think it is very much a like, why, why can't we all get along? Like it, yeah. it's, it's comic, like it, it's just comics or it's just space or it's just mm-hmm. fantasy. Like it's all, it should all be good. And I, I don't right. know many people, if any, actually that only like one thing, like I Agreed. know, I know DC fanboys like, super dc fanboys that still go and watch the marvel movies and then occasionally i'll get a phone call and be like why can't dc make a movie that good right like and i appreciate that that honesty can happen from somebody who enjoys both sides right it's, right, it's a little yeah. tongue-in-cheek yeah but there's still a lot of people that are like no just one like really just one like you only want i, I mean come on just one out of, out of- out of everything that comics brings us, you're only choosing one side. You're not really digging into the other side to see what they have to offer because they have a whole host of other superheroes and villains yeah. that, whew, you know, you could definitely dive into and you might, you know, enjoy more than some others on the Marvel side. So it's one of those. It's one of those things. Do do you um, 
do you outside of comics and movies mm-hmm. and television are are you a like a book reader uh i would say i'm a now and again book reader okay. i'm not an avid reader in the sense of how amanda like amanda is reading um game of thrones pr- probably for the 20th time um <laughs> but i do enjoy uh good fantasy books so if i find one that i really do enjoy i'll just like dig in and i'll not watch tv or any movies for a bit to now, enjoy the series or do you want like a one-off or do you want like a series um a series because i do like learning the characters and seeing how their relationships develop just like i would watch you know a series on television okay. so okay yeah. cuz i'm oh math time right uh 3 <laughs> 3 7 3 3 6 10 11 12 so i'm 12 books into the terry brooks uh shanara series right okay. um and i'm a stickler for reading things in the order they were published not the order they yes. were um, mm-hmm. written or not, not chronological order, just chronological in publish order. So I'm finishing another trilogy. I don't know soon. And that's, that's a series that I don't think enough people, I think a lot of, I think some people know of it and um, MTV Shannara Chronicles maybe helped a little bit, but mm-hmm. MTV didn't do justice to the series. So uh. I feel like, I if I could get you into that, like start at the okay. beginning, uh, start yeah. with this sort of Shannara trilogy, like you will, and and what to me, and this is what I think people can say about a lot of different things. To mm-hmm. me, Terry Brooks is candy, right? Like oh. like Tolkien is like a full meal. Mm-hmm. Terry Brooks isn't that heavy. Like okay. there's some th- like l- look I mean it gets serious there's some forces of darkness obviously it's fantasy like it yeah. is it has those high fantasy elements but you do not feel like I I need a dictionary along with this book like this okay. is not and it, but it's not young adult fiction either it's just kind of somewhere in the middle in the okay yeah that's that's a nice blend and I just put you just put away a book in a weekend like it's so. It's one of those books, right? Like, and yeah, th- th- um, it doesn't happen for me often. Like, th- I think Ready Player One was like one of those books where I picked it up and, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, seventeen hours later, I put it down. Right? Like, what yeah. happened to my Saturday or whatever? <laughs> like, I just <laughs> no. Those are books that I usually look for because I am so much into TV and movies and things like that. So I'm like, you know, if I can't read this book in a couple of days, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, and you get addicted to some of those worlds. It's just like, yeah, I, I have a hard time now. I think with, um, I'm trying to pace myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you find a new show that may be out or, or mm-hmm. over with and you go, all right, I can binge this, but I absolutely try not to. Like, because yeah. like I, you know, okay, um, this show, w- whatever it is, um, had 57 episodes and it's done. It's been done for years. And I go, I'm going to try and watch just one a day. Like, don't, don't ruin it. Like, don't, don't just get rid of it. Like you want it. You want to enjoy you, it. Yes. You want to enjoy every piece of it. Yeah. The, those are books that I look for that I enjoy reading. And I'm going to look into that because if, if that's what I'm going to get out of that book, then I'll be very happy. <laughs> yeah. I And and I've been like, I turned myself into a reader because I was mm-hmm. like, I, w- I want to read more. Right. Um, and I forced it and then it became more of a habit. Um, and I don't suggest people do this because it's not the healthiest. Like I forced, I was like, I'm going to read 10 pages every night. Like that's how I started it. And then you just start mm-hmm. getting into the books and you're like, Oh, all right. Oh yeah. And then you're like, and uh, then I it's more to... than 10 pages. A night. <laughs> and Well, it's more than 10 pages. And you're like, I got to go to bed early if I'm going to read before bed. Cause now all of a sudden I'm reading for an hour and it's like one o'clock and I got to yeah. get up in the morning and say, you know, um, and this, yeah. but the same is true for like television shows and stuff. Like you, you, oh, yeah. you get one and you get going and you're like, mm, I don't know. That that's exactly uh, what happened when I watched The Witcher, the second season. I was up till one o'clock in the morning because I could not not finish this. I was like, "No, you're doing this. 
We are watching all of them because it's just too good to leave another episode for another day. Now, how does that compare with like Hawkeye? And I'm talking about I'm talking in terms of release, right? Like because Disney kind of like the terrestrial television of old, like you got to wait. Like here's one episode and now wait a week. I'm so on the fence with that one because I enjoy both. But then, you know, now that I finish Witcher is done, I have nothing to do. But at least with Hawkeye, I have something to look forward to every Wednesday night, Okay, you know, when it would come out. So um, in that short moment of time, it was actually pretty nice to have shows to watch at night to kind of like unwind. Yeah. Um, so I would watch, you know... Uh, Hawkeye came out on Wednesday. The Wheel of Time came out on a Friday. So I was like, okay, so these two days are my two days. I'm going to relax, kick back, enjoy the show. Yeah. Like, you know, (laughs) and just let my mind wander with all this uh, greatness. Um, But yeah, I, I mean, I enjoy both. I think it depends on the type of show. Yeah, I I can agree with that cuz I'll I um I've never watched Stranger Things other than a binge um for the seasons that exist at, at least as, as for now mm-hmm. and I, I because of the way that show is written I think it's I written think it to be, be a- binged. I don't know yeah. if you could wait a week in between things. Right. Um Yeah. I I know that like the first season I started it too late, so I had to go to bed. Like, mm-hmm. I just had to. I was like, I, I'll pick this up in the morning. It's fine. <laughs> but, it's like, fine. it was just one of those, like, find it. Like, what episode do I stop on? Like, uh, yeah. Because they just roll in. They they, mm-hmm. they want you to keep going, oh, and they yeah. know what they they're doing. You. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think uh, when we're talking about these shows, and also the style of writing is different yeah. from, you know, like you said, binging Stranger Things versus, you know, watching a show like Hawkeye, it has a different pace to it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, do, did you, I mean, you're a consumer of media is what I'll call mm-hmm. you, right? Like, because, and I, I think for the most part we all are, uh, but geeks kind of a little bit more than others. We pay a little more attention. We watch a little bit more. We read a little yeah. bit more. Mm-hmm. Do you have like a, a creative itch like do you want to pitch uh a storyline for a comic book character or a television show or a movie like is that in you yes <laughs> that's 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 uh another reason why we're doing this because i do have uh, a background in communication and film and screenwriting and acting um so a lot of times especially if i'm doing an acting class I can't watch TV. I can't watch movies because my brain is in actor's mode, writer's mode. So I'm picking up on things that normally as just a normal viewer and trying to enjoy the show, I wouldn't catch. But as a writer, I'm just like, okay, that line didn't work right there. Why did they put that in there? That makes no sense to the story. But, but do you, so do you like, do you will like, will you go back and watch Hawkeye again as, uh, with your writer brain on? Like, do you rewatch? Yes. So, so you'll, mm-hmm. you can consume things and you can, you can turn it on and off? Uh, yes. Okay. So when I first started watching Will of Time, I originally was watching it specifically because we're going to do a podcast episode on it, but I literally have a notebook of notes for each individual, uh, episode. Okay. And it was literally me with the captions on watching it, pause, writing my notes, watching it, pause, writing my notes. <laughs> and then after a while, because it was getting so good and I haven't read the books, we decided we were going to watch it first, okay. do a podcast and then read the books and then revisit and do another podcast to compare. Sure. And I was just like, I can't make notes and write this at the same time because so much is happening and it's really good. So I'm going to just enjoy it for right now and then go back and rewatch and make notes. So, um Stephanie, who's my partner who moved in with me a few years ago, mm-hmm. um she and I have a very similar approach to podcasting/reviewing slash things. Um mm-hmm. she was on a very long-running uh Gotham podcast. 
Oh, okay. And um, obviously, it's no more as the show is no yeah. more. But yeah. but I, um, you know, she would watch the show mm-hmm. straight through, and then she'd watch it again and make her notes. Right. I am that way with most movies that when I do reviews on my website, it's like I'll watch it the first time Mm -hmm. straight through if I've never seen it before. And Mm -hmm. then I'll watch it again for notes. Like if I've already seen it, like if it's a movie I've seen a hundred times, like a few years ago, I was like, I'm going to finally write about Jurassic Park. Like I've already seen it. So uh, this is purely just for notes. But like when new things come out first time. Always, always as just a consumer, just not a reviewer at all. The second time is when I turn it on because it's so, first of all, if, if nobody out there listening has ever watched something with the captions on. Oh my you, God. Like, You're the, missing so much. The differences. Like even just the, like, especially the small differences where you're like, all right, did they put the script into the captions or is the captions pulling something else? Cause like, and it's not, I'm not even talking like something that's subbed from another language, just English Mm -hmm. to English English, is just. It's so funny you say that because we went and saw Spider-Man No Way Home and before the movie even started. All I could think about is I wish we could put captions on because <laughs> I already knew the audience was going to go crazy for certain things that happen in the movie. So you're going to miss a lot just because everybody's going crazy. The, but I'm like, there, there's going to be so much we're going to miss just because there's so much happening on screen. The first Avengers, the first mm. Avengers. Um, and I feel like anybody who saw it in theaters missed this line as well. Um, puny God, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Because, yeah. because Hulk smashing Loki and everybody's laughing, laughing and then you see his lips move, but everybody's laughing and you have no you idea what he said. Like, yep. I know he said something. What did he say? Yes, exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, but, but to me, that's like a, that's, you know, that's a reason to like enjoy the home experience right like yeah i can put the captions on or not Mm -hmm. like um it but it is it is a unique experience though and you get used to it like i I know there because i've i and i i maybe i spent enough time watching subbed series that were Mm -hmm. like foreign language things that like captions don't bother me at all Mm -hmm. um it's kind of like just watching two things at once it's fine right yeah but even if not you get used to it it's like anything else Mm -hmm. watch your favorite movie like challenge yourself watch your favorite movie of all time with the captions with the captions on yeah be very surprised yes (laughs) i i agree with that so do you um do you have favorite writers um i wouldn't say that i have favorite writers Um, writing wasn't a thing that I thought I could do or was interested in from a young age. It wasn't until I was like off in college that, and I took uh, a writing class just because I needed an extra credit. And, um, we had to come up with like ideas and things like that. And my ideas actually were pretty good. And I was like, wait, I have I have talent here. Okay, maybe this is something that I could dabble in. So let's go back for a second mm-hmm. because I feel like a lot of things hinge on just this. I need a credit. I'm going to take a writing class. <laughs> so be- before that, right before you made that decision, uh, what did you what like what what was the trajectory? What were you going to be? Um, I was focusing on drama. Okay. So all my classes um, had to do with some type of theater or film appreciation or something to that point. Like I took an editing class, took a photography class. So um, I think when I signed up for that class, for the most part, for my major, I had already took all the classes that I needed. So at this point, I was, you know, one of the lucky few who could just take random classes sure. <laughs> to just make sure I got <laughs> what I needed. Um, so, yeah, I took that script writing class and came up with a couple of ideas. And um, they're like, these are pretty good ideas. You know, they gave me some advice about like doing more research and things like that, especially if you're talking about a particular um 
anything like dance or anything like that, you want to make sure you know what you're talking about and it's being true to the story. Because if you're setting this world up, you need to know the language of that world. Yeah. So um, that's where I kind of learned a lot of the basis basics uh, for the foundation of script writing. And then that just set off more fireworks about, you know, <laughs> comics and this because I'm like, OK, so I need to think about this and this is the world I want to set up. And like, OK, there's pieces. Now it's a puzzle and I love doing puzzles. So let's figure this out. So do you enjoy like the bigger projects then? Like mm-hmm. as opposed yeah. to the smaller ones? Yes. OK, I definitely do. Because I, definitely I mean, do. you're because you're headed on a path into a place where there's n- everything's big. And there's yeah. lots of moving pieces. Yeah, I'm all, I've always been one of those pers- uh, people who looked at the bigger picture, not necessarily details. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this is the bigger picture. This is where we need to get to. Okay, now let's figure out the steps by working backwards. Yeah. And then that's how we end up there. All right. And and now uh, I, I know the, the – how has the podcast changed you? Because obviously the, the podcast is like yours. So unlike anything else you've ever done in theater mm-hmm. where it's, you know, maybe somebody else's play and you're, you know, yeah. doing your thing, like the podcast yeah. is yours. I mean, it's not yeah. solely yours, you, you know, you, you have a, co- but, but it's yours. Does ownership change? Like how, how has ownership changed things for you? Um, I take a lot more pride in what I'm doing because it is mine. So uh, one of the things that me and Amanda have in common is like, when we do things, we're going to do it to the best of our ability because it has our name on it. So yeah. obviously we want to put out the best that we can give. So in that, we're trying to just make sure one, we enjoy it at the end of the day, because if we don't enjoy it, then why are we doing it? This is something we're doing outside of everything else in our life. Yeah. Um, And then also it's dealing with things we already enjoy and love. So being able to watch movies and comic, read comics and watch TV series on Netflix with a purpose of creating something even more. is like it's been one of the best experiences, but it also taught us and taught me like, okay, if you're going to do this, then you got to do it. You got to, you know, dedicate time specifically to this writing, editing, watching different things, doing the research, looking at TikToks all day because this is a part of it. So it just helped me realize how more dedicated I have to be to certain things that I want to do. So with that in mind, Mm -hmm. what do you want to do? Like, is it is it is it writing? Is it directing? Is it producing? All of it. <laughs> All of it. This is just the stepping stone. This okay. is, I feel like this is a small version of what I could do with my full potential. So, gotcha. all right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I mean, you're, cause you're talking to the king of wasted potential. Um, no, I mean, no. I mean, not now, maybe not mm-hmm. now. I think, I think I've finally grown into it. But like, if you had seen anything any teacher had written about me, maybe up through, sophomore year of college maybe Mm -hmm. but every any scholastic like bookend to my you know semester of any kind before then would have been like nah, not you know he's getting c's but he could probably get a's if he applied himself oh yeah like i'm yeah i'm that guy and like now that feeling all too well (laughs) like now that it's mine and and i think Mm -hmm. to your point like now that it's mine it's my show it's my blog i think i'm living up to it a little bit more um Mm -hmm. i think uh, you you, we don't rest yeah i think i think i can always do better i can always learn something um but you just you know i i think in in hindsight right Mm -hmm. it's easier for me to let those teachers down than it is to let let myself yeah, yeah, there it is. Right there that, with you. That's right what there it is. You. And it's, it's knowing that like in the end, in the very end, it's you. Yeah. So if it doesn't work out, it's not because of anybody else. It's because you didn't put the work in and you have to look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, did you do enough? 
<laughs> and if you did it, then it's like, okay, tomorrow we got to do a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I understand that we, we need breaks too, right? Like you oh, need yeah. to be able to watch a movie just to watch a movie. It's not, mm-hmm. not everything is a, you know, for more content, but yeah, it's really hard to turn that off. Like you've been doing the podcast for a little bit now. Like, Mm -hmm. do you now see the world as, okay, well that could be an episode. Okay. That could be like, has that creeped in yet? That's that started before we actually recorded. (laughs) (laughs) Because even today, even today, um, Amanda is watching um, Enchanto, the new animated movie on Disney Plus with her daughter. Okay. And she's telling me about it. And the whole time I'm like, and this is another episode. Yep. And she's like, and this could be an episode. So you got to watch it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, done, done, easily done. Yeah, it's 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 really hard. Like I, because, I, you know, I set up the Palmer brand to be everything. Mm -hmm. So I can write about sports. I can write about movies. I can write about television. I can write about business. I like, I can write about anything and I can have anybody I want on the show. So like I scroll through Twitter for five minutes and go, well, there's three movies I need to watch that I could probably review. And there's two people I should probably invite on the show. Like, like it's, it's never like you don't. Yeah. Like when you say you can watch a movie and turn the switch off, right? Mm -hmm. I can do that when I'm doing that one thing. Like I can just read a book or I can just watch a movie, but like Mm -hmm. in the rest of my life, no, it's always on. It's always like, well, that's okay. Well, that's mm, why, why is that like that? Maybe I should write about that. Maybe other people have that question or like, maybe I should have that person on. Like it's, it's never like the list of things. Okay. The list Mm -hmm. of things that I want to write about. Right. Is probably as long as the amount of things I've already done and it okay. will grow again tomorrow. Oh, right. Yeah. And the the amount of people that I want to invite on this podcast is probably will always be longer. Always be, yeah. It will yeah. always be, a, you know, it's so it's this weird like, all right, well, creators always be creating, I guess. Like that's. <laughs> Well, I've told myself, um, so I am a part of this community. It's called Compete Every Day. And it's just the basis of every day you want to do your best, strive to, you know, reach your goals, do 1% every day. That's all you're asking. Not 100, just 1% because that's going to stack on top of each other. But just as much as you're doing every day, you also need to schedule time just like you would schedule an hour to go to the gym. You need to schedule an hour to do nothing. And so that's usually what I do. I usually schedule it maybe the first thing in the morning. Maybe it's my lunch break. And I literally, I don't touch anything on social media, don't watch anything. Maybe I'll pick up a book and read a little bit, but I try to do nothing just at least so I could say, okay, even if I'm doing all of this, at least I had my hour of nothing. I, 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 I come and go with that. Um, yeah. I, um, a few years ago, I kind of started getting back and I got into Minecraft. Um, okay. and that's a thing where I can mindlessly play for an hour. That's the yeah. closest I get to a nothing except, you know, as we speak, I've got an Island and I've got a couple builds and I'm going to build a castle and I got an mm-hmm. automatic farm here and an automatic farm. <laughs> like, so even in my nothing, I've got a list of something. things to do. <laughs> Like it's really because I, I I agree, and I think more people need that one percent approach, right? Because yeah. I've been, um, you, we 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 all try and have the best habits, um, yeah. oh, and the best intentions, the right? Well, like, um, mm-hmm. but I know, um, as an example, there are things that I fall behind on, mm-hmm. and then you know it's like, oh, I. I have, you know, uh, so as an example, every time I do a review of a book or a movie, I take a lot of notes Mm -hmm. and on my website, I have a little floppy disk that's called agent Palmer's secret files. And that is a link to basically like my own personal IMDB, right? Like it's all of my notes. It's all of the quotes I pulled 
because, you know, I might pull 30 quotes from a book. I'll probably only use two in the review, but I still yeah. want to share those somewhere. Those thir- yeah. I am, even though I try and I know I should, I am horrible at making sure that, okay, a book review went out, did the secret file that accompanied it go out, right? Because I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. by- and, and so, you know, it was a thing where it was like, all right, I'm, I'm 20 behind. Just let's just knock out one a day. Even if I yeah. add more on, I'm only putting out one one post a week. So I will catch up. It will get mm-hmm. done. You don't have to do it all at once. And I, I right. there are so many and and there are so many people that feel overwhelmed. They're like, oh, I have a yeah. hundred things to do. Yeah. Okay. That's just fine. Do one, one, one thing. You just gotta start. Mm-hmm. Like that. It's just that little bit. Like, and I'm for editing this show, mm-hmm. uh, five minutes, right? Like if I sit down and edit five minutes, that's cool. Like my show releases every two weeks. If I do five minutes a day for a 90 minute recording, it'll get done well in advance. And I'm trying yep. to, you know, get ahead of the schedule, but like I, you know, cause people think about it in terms of like, oh, um, well you record it for 90 minutes um, you know, on average, let's say it's two to one. So that's three hours of editing you have ahead of you. And it's like, well, yeah, but I'm not sitting down for three hours and editing at all. Yeah. Like just mm-hmm. little by little incremental things. Like let's, let's be kind to ourselves. Like I'm not yeah. asking you to run a marathon. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll ask you to run a marathon in a month, <laughs> but not tomorrow. <laughs> but not right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the whole saying of, um, you know, the question of how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. You don't eat the whole thing. You take your time. So, yeah. No, I'm definitely right there with you. Now, do you do any of the writing stuff like that? Like the, the like you know, a thousand words a day in November kind of a deal? Like, do you challenge yourself there? I've been trying to get on top of that. Okay. I've always started. And at some point, somewhere, I miss like a day. A day becomes two. Um, but right now my goal is just 250 words. It okay. doesn't matter if it's on a specific subject. As okay. long as I'm writing 250 words on that day, then I think for me, that'll slowly build into, okay, I'm going to sit down and write a page okay. and then we'll do a page a day and things like that. So, um, that's usually how I do it, especially with the podcast, I'll sit down and write, you know, everything that we need for whichever episode. And if it ends up to being 250 words or more, I'm like done. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, I, I started the blog as a writing exercise, really. Oh, uh, I mean, that because okay. that, I, um, I needed to write blogs for what was my day job at the time. And I hadn't mm-hmm. written since college, which had been seven years at that point. And it was like, oh. all right, well, that you write it, writings like anything else, like you have to do it. And so I was like, I'll just, you know, and, mm-hmm. and so, I mean, it's definitely turned into something a little bit more than that. And now it's spawned a podcast and the whole thing. But like, for me, it's not necessarily daily writing, mm-hmm. um, but I have a habit of it now. So like, I'm, okay. I'm proficient in it, right? Like it yeah. was, it was weekly for years and years and years. And now it's like, all right, okay, well, I'm a bit ahead I'm I'm always yeah. working ahead, but I I applaud your 250 a day because like I look back at that and I go, all right, well, there was only f- for four months I was abroad in Jerusalem for a semester in high school and I journaled every day. And outside mm-hmm. of those four months, I don't think I've ever written daily ever. Isn't that crazy though? It's only that Wait. one. And, and here's the thing yeah. before then, like before that moment in time. I had started journals and never lasted more than two weeks. So I'm lucky that those four months are documented. But even Mm -hmm. since then, I don't think I've written daily. Um, Maybe there, you know, maybe there's a week somewhere (laughs) that Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting, but like daily is, I don't know why, but for me, that's the hard one. I think it's because we're thinking of it in terms of is something that I have to do. Yeah, but I, we, but but we're creatives. We, we're always yeah. challenging ourselves to right. do that thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I think like one of the things as a creative, 
um, that I think a part of me has struggled with is, especially when you're trying to create something, a lot of times we don't realize that we have to create a habit in order to figure out how to trigger it so that when we're ready to create, we know exactly what to do. But until we are constantly trying to actively do it, we kind of like don't don't really know. <sighs> See, and I, I, I wonder about that because like th- there's a part of me that I, I don't like it at the time, but right. I do. And that yeah. is, I don't mind pacing around my house waiting for that first line. Mm-hmm. Like um, whatever it is, uh, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter the post. Like if I can get that one line, the other 250, 3,000, 4,000, the other words will find. I they need will, they'll, they'll I need that first line. And as much as I hate it in the moment, I do think in hindsight, like I relish the wandering around, turning it over in my head, trying to mm-hmm. figure out like, where's that starting point? Where mm-hmm. is it? Because I know that once, once I pull that lever, the, 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 it's the, just going to flow. It's done. Yep, yeah. It's out. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I, I remember being in school and being up till two, three o'clock in the morning, not having an idea. And then all of a sudden it would just click. And then next thing you know, for the next two hours, I'm just writing, typing, doing whatever I need to do. That's the story so, yeah. of every paper I've ever written scholastically. Like I think that, every, <laughs> and, and it, it's not always the night before. Right. But it oh, is that yeah. like, Oh, Oh, I hold, hold that thought. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Somebody give me a paper. I got to write this down. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to lose this. I need the, oh my God. That's why I always carry a notebook with me now because I realize that a lot of times, a lot of the inspirations that you do get happen outside of, you know, your office or when you're not at home, when you're randomly in the grocery store looking at, you know, a bottle of milk and then all of a sudden you, an idea sparks, but yeah. you have no paper, you have no pen. You have to just keep repeating it to yourself until you can find somewhere to write it down. I, so. I know that there are people that swear by like voice recorder, but I just can't do it. I... I need to write it down or a, I, I can, I have, I, I don't, I, I don't know what the phrase is. I think I've trained myself. I can work on a full keyboard or a mm-hmm. pen and paper. Yeah. But a phone does not work for me. Like I can't, I can type fast and I can write fast, but I cannot type with my thumbs fast enough to keep up. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's just something about getting it out and not saying it. Uh, yeah. When it's supposed, because I think for me the disconnect is that you and I are having this great conversation, and the words that are coming out of my mouth are the words that are coming out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. But if I wanted this to be text, I need to see it on the page or on the screen as text. I yeah. don't think I could just listen back to this and go, "Oh yeah, that works as text." Yeah. No. <laughs> and from. Me, especially if I'm writing a script or something like that, I'm not necessarily hearing the script as myself. I'm hearing the character as they, how they speak, how they deliver it. So for me, a lot of times, like when I'm writing something down, I'm not writing it down in a conventional way of, you know, left part of the page to the right. I'm writing, okay, this person's name in the center of the page as if it was in an actual script. Yeah. And then what they would say and then, you know, where where the location is, what's happening around. So whenever I'm writing something down, I'm writing it in actual script form. So to record it, it would never work for me. <laughs> <laughs> or even typing it up. It just does not it does not compute. I got you. Yeah. I mean I I I think that more people should carry around paper and pen Mm -hmm. Uh, because let's be real it's reliable yes (laughs) like super reliable i mean Mm -hmm. except for the times when you don't have it with you like and that's you know you just that's the the creating a habit we talk about really just always have it with you and always have it with you you'll Mm -hmm. be fine now do you have one notebook or multiple notebooks oh i have 
I want to say I probably got like a hundred notebooks in my room right now. <laughs> now are in they all sizes? Are they all full, or are we talking about like I started this one and then I pulled another oh, one out and I started um, this one? Some of them are full. Okay. Um, some of them are partially full, depending on where they are. Like I always just throw a notebook in my bag or my book bag or gym bag. Um, so there's some that have nothing, like none of the pages have anything to do with the other. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, but that's just usually cause I'm doing something else and it sparks something. So, um, I definitely have some notebooks that are specific to whatever I'm writing about or what I want to write down notes for. Um, so yeah, it's all over the place. <laughs> now, how often do you revisit those? Because like, I, and I'm a guy who, by a, a, as an example, right? Um, I've moved most of my drafting into Google Docs, and mm -hmm. I have one document that at this point is probably like 96 pages of wow. like working things, right? So mm -hmm. it's, you know, I watched a movie and didn't end up writing about it yet, so the mm -hmm. notes are in there, or like here's an idea for a post. And that's in there. So, you know, when it when it eventually becomes a finished post and gets published, I delete it out of the doc. So that's 96 pages of like mm -hmm. random ideas and working stuff. But I am, I, I will admit, horrible at going back when I need a post and being like, oh, what do I have on page 87? Like scrolling <laughs> back like that I haven't finished that is just there for the picking. And I just, yeah. I, I am horrible at going back. I will say now with the podcast, I'm I'm excellent at going back because <laughs> there's so many things that I've referenced and written down because as time goes on, thank you, Marvel, uh, <laughs> more information just keeps popping out about different things and people's theories. So I'm writing it down everywhere. And when I'm writing the scripts for the podcast, I'm gathering all of those notes and I actually don't throw away my notes. I keep them because they're all dated. Uh, that's one thing I've enjoyed growing up having notebooks and going back and looking at what I okay. was interested in, what I wrote down. Cause even now I'll go back and read a couple of things and I'm like, I was a very wise woman at a young age. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just like, it's interesting to see what things have repeated over time. Okay. Um, or just what I was interested in, if it still applies. Well, so. I think those things ebb and flow really like mm -hmm. I, I just started reading science fiction again. Oh, okay. You know, um, I'm, you know, I got a bookshelf, uh, opposite my desk and I've got like, you know, Asimov, right. And, and Bradbury mm -hmm. and Clark. And mm -hmm. it's because I read them 20 years ago. Yeah. I'm just starting to read that kind of stuff again. Right. And it's just, I, I I don't know wh where it went. <laughs> like you know, like, you know what I mean. Like it, yeah. there, like ten years ago, it's not like it, had you asked me, I would have been like, I don't like science fi fiction. Like that's not a thing I would have ever said. But I had just gotten away from consuming it. Yeah, and I don't know what. Well, I know what brought me back. There was a, a friend of mine who's an author who wrote a book uh, that was science fiction, and I read it, and I was like. Oh, I really I, like. I really liked. I remember yeah. this. This is this is another one of my jams, right? Like that's yeah. the thing. It's not. It's like oh, okay. Like there is a pantheon because mm -hmm. there are many things. <laughs> it's not many just things. one thing. There are yeah. many things, and mm -hmm. I I have to get like, and I I think it ebbs and flows because we can't consume it all all the time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely think we go through stages of where we kind of, okay, this is the one thing I'm focusing on right now because I'm just in it. And then it slowly moves to something else because either we remember or we get nostalgic for something that we had. Yeah. Um, like now uh, we just bought a bunch of the Anne Rice books um, <laughs> because that was the the first book book that I became obsessed with okay. in high school was N Rice and the Vampire Lestat and all of this. So to 
go back and buy the books and then reread read the books. It's just like, I forgot how good this felt. <laughs> so what was, so I, I'm, I'm getting to a point where I do want to start rereading things. Like I've come to the conclusion that especially when it comes to a book, um, and I think I touched on this last episode, like when it comes to a book where you are in life is so much more important to your takeaways from the book. Oh, so yeah. what was it like rereading that book? Right. Because obviously you're in a different place now. Like, especially if yeah. you read that first in high school, like, yeah, things change. I think in high school, you're just thinking about like, oh, how hot he is. You're not <laughs> thinking about all of the issues this p- person is going through. And, you know, you first think this guy is the bad guy. But then you turn around and you're like, no, they were valid in all of their points. <laughs> this guy is actually the bad guy. And you know, that's been kind of happening on and off as I go back and I rewatch even movies, like rewatching all the Spider-Man movies before No Way Home came out and just kind of like, wait a second, this is something's not right here. (laughs) Um, But I think it's just because, you know, now you have more life experiences. You dealt with a lot more. You've probably had a lot more heartbreak, um, dealt with more traumatic things that have probably happened to you or traumatic things that happened in the past that you're finally starting to face. And you're realizing like, okay, you know, when people go through certain things, they don't always see things clearly. They don't always act with the most sound mind they're acting out of feelings um feeling betrayed or hurt or something like that so you you kind of have some type of em- empathy for that person and you kind of have a better understanding so you're kind of like okay maybe he wasn't such you know a <laughs> douche in this book maybe he was a good guy so yeah all right all right yeah i mean i i have a friend who swears by ann rice um hmm. And uh, he's actually the one that turned me on to Terry Brooks. So, oh, okay. I mean, you know, there's uh, there's that for you uh, mm-hmm. as a little. But I'm I'm excited to start. I think I was always a little afraid for some of those books because you remember them. Um, Are you talking from we, Interview with the Vampire? No, just in, general, or, just, just, just in general. Just books yeah. in general. Like you look back and you go, I loved that book. And you go, yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't want to tarnish you it. I don't. I don't want to yeah, read it again. I'm, I'm afraid. Like what, maybe I won't like it as exactly much. Exactly what you mean. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, that's uh It's funny because you say that, and I'm thinking about all the movies we've rewatched, especially now with the TVs that we have. Um, we rewatch Cool World. If you ever heard of the movie Love Cool, cool World. World, you don't understand. With- you don't understand. You're talking <laughs> to the wrong guy. I I did an entire <laughs> series that is still incomplete on Ralph Bakshi, right? So Wizards, oh Cool World, uh, uh, um, uh, American Pop, um, Coonskin, um, mm. all every movie he's ever done, I've written about. Oh my god, love love Cool. So World. yeah, imagine it. So watching that movie as a kid, loving it, obsessed, like it's the greatest thing ever. And then rewatching as an adult on these crazy HD TVs and you just see cardboard cutouts and you're just like, what is this? Yeah. 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 Now, now what was that experience? Because I haven't seen Cool World in about a few years. I haven't seen it since I wrote about it. (sighs) Um, it, It was a very strange, like you're obviously watching it because it was a movie you enjoyed and you want the nostalgia feeling of rewatching. Like I watched this as a kid. It's going to be so great. And we're getting someone else to watch it because they've never seen it. And we're like, how can you have not ever seen this movie? It's going to be great. (laughs) And then you see the cardboard cutouts and just like the animation. You're just like, Okay, we did not need to watch this movie. See, but I think I think it all I think it adds to the nostalgia. I I cuz I'm yeah. I'm all right with it. I don't need perfection. Um and I think yes. I've I've come to th- that's been a that's been a personal journey, right? Like mm-hmm. I have that note and I, I for some reason it always seems to creep up like perfection is the enemy of good. Like yeah. none of oh. us would ever be putting anything out 
if we were trying to make it perfect. So absolutely, this is the best I can do right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hit publish because I still want to share it with you. Yeah. um, As opposed to just keep keeping it to myself, I guess. Like, what? And what's the purpose? Like, I guess at that point, like I put this work in, I drafted these thousand words. I Mm -hmm. edited this podcast Mm -hmm. and it's good. It could be better, but if, but it's good. So why not share it as opposed to just be like, well, I'm going to keep this good thing here and wait no. until like. Because you're never going to get better if you keep it to yourself. There you go. And people who truly enjoy that podcast, whatever you're talking about, are going to give you feedback, not only on the topic that you're talking about, but also if they hear something off or whatever, because one, they enjoyed it. They probably want to hear more. And they also want you to get better because it's only going to, you know, help them enjoy the podcast even more. So, yeah, I'm definitely a firm believer in just putting it out there and doing learn in the doing because yes. there's some things you cannot learn in preparation. I I like that's the, the for, like there that's a huge takeaway, right? Like because I mm-hmm. um I I think that one of the things you don't learn. Like you can learn to write, okay? And you yeah. can write all you want and you can record yourself all you want. You know what you can't learn? The fear of publish. Like the, yeah. the, the like especially like oh. okay, so you know, I've been blogging for 10 years, the podcast is too like I like there's no fear when I hit publish anymore. But when I mm-hmm. think back on the first episodes or the first blog posts, hitting publish was like a it's all ready to go. All I have to do is click that mouse button and yeah. yet I'm not, right? Like you're just st- yeah. you're staring at the computer being like uh, Do I want to do this? <laughs> and then and then you and then you hit publish, right? And yeah. you don't learn about that trepidation. You don't learn about that mm-hmm. fear. You also don't get the exhilaration of actually hitting publish cuz there yeah. is all of that lead up and then you're like, oh, but it's out there. Okay, like, it's out. It's done. Yeah, it's out there. Let it be. Let it fly. But I also think it's like you don't also you won't if you don't hit publish, you won't get the amazing feedback because one of the things that made me even want to do more of the podcast was having my friends listen to it and be like, okay, it's live. You could go listen to it on Spotify or whatever. And having them listen to it but text me at the same time as the podcast is going yeah. and being like, oh my God, this was great. Oh my gosh, she talked about this. I totally forgot about that. Oh, that was so great. That feeling is like, that's the whole reason why you're doing it in the first place. The quick beats from this conversation are easy and simple. All of you should go experience your favorite movie with the captions on and never leave home without a notebook, to which I can also add never leave for home without it either. But I think we did cover the concept of taking ownership very well and how in doing so it changes your relationship to the outcome for creators. But I think this can be generally for entrepreneurs of any kind. Everything is content through the eyes of a creator, and everything is an opportunity through the eyes of an entrepreneur, or at least it can be. Does that mean you should do a weekly podcast, a weekly blog, write 250 words a day? No. What it means is that you should do what you can so that when you ask yourself, did I do enough, you can answer yourself affirmatively. This also means not comparing yourself to me or Janae or anyone else you see out there. And it directly relates to the idea that it feels like we're always having the wrong conversation because of clickbait and social media. The clickbait says to do this because it works for me or to do this because it worked for someone else. But the internet isn't really good at explaining why. Because as a whole, clickbait works on the principle that the best headline wins and the content doesn't really have to follow through. Don't worry about the clickbait. Don't worry about the internet. Did you do enough? Decide for yourself and set your own expectations. Don't let anyone else tell you what your thing should be or should look like. 
And when that thing is ready for public consumption, let us know. Because when you're ready, you're ready. And as cliche as it is, you will know when you know. Thanks for listening to The Palmer Files, episode 63. As a reminder, all links are available in the show notes. And now for the official business. The Palmer Files releases every two weeks on Tuesdays. If you're still listening, I encourage you to join the discussion. You can tweet me at Agent Palmer, my guest Janae Ivory at J Ivory, that's J I V E R Y, her show Girls Go Books Deep at GG underscore Books Deep, and this show at The Palmer Files. You can find Janae's podcast at girlsgobooksdeep.com or wherever good podcasts can be listened to. Email can be sent to this show at thepalmerfiles at gmail.com. And remember, your home for all things Agent Palmer is agentpalmer.com. All right, Janae, do you have one final question for me? Yes. Being that me and Amena have started our first podcast, what advice would you give us since you've been doing this for two years? Um, so I've been doing my own show for two years. I've actually been in podcasting for like, I don't know, six, seven, something ridiculous number. What I will tell you is okay. this. If you can keep your show open, Mm-hmm. and and flexible to a point where you can talk about anything um have guests on or not have guests on maybe do a solo episode maybe try fiction if you keep your show and and it seems like you're open to those kind of ex- you can f- stay away from the number one pitfall that i see podcasters especially independent podcasters fall into which is as an example, we have a movie show. Mm-hmm. This is a movie podcast. But I really want to talk to that person. So I'm going to start a brand new show so gotcha. I can do that thing. Instead of mm-hmm. finding a way to have that person come on to your existing show, they they start we, we start multiplying shows. Mm-hmm. And what happens is that's where, look, a, the, there are a lot of numbers that have maintained right if you get past the first 10 the next goal is 50 because if you you know and if you get to 50 then you should be fine right Mm -hmm. like you've established yourself if you can get past the first 10 you're good but to me it's also not starting another one uh yeah because you're you, you know i i made a conscious effort when i started my show I went every two weeks so I could keep the blog as weekly because there was no way I was going to be able to do a weekly blog and a weekly podcast. I just knew that. And I Mm -hmm. feel like while it's exciting in the talking and the recording, people forget when they have the idea about all the other work. Yeah. Right. So my, my thing is if you can try and make it so that your one main show is your just main show. And you can do whatever you want there. And if, if you want to do a solo episode, then Amanda's all right with that. And if Amanda wants to do a solo episode, you are, you're okay with that. Or, you know, anything like that, if you can keep it as flexible as possible so it can just be one show. Because mm-hmm. what ends up okay. happening is those splinter things, mm-hmm. they tend to, it, they're not bad. They're never bad originally, but then they end up splintering your energy. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to do. Um, and then people are like, um, you know, so my advice is if you can just, you know, you can subtitle things, right? Like, oh yeah, this, or, or you can do thematic months if you want, right? Like, okay, we're just going to invite other podcasters on, or we're going to invite other writers on for this month or whatever, you know, like whatever you want to do, if you can make your, your show flexible so that you don't get the wandering eye and go, well, maybe I should do this other show. 
No, no. If you can do it all in one, like more power to you because that's huge. I've seen yeah. friends of mine and I won't call them out, but like I've seen friends of mine who've had like four, up to four shows and then just burnt out. Uh, and it's like, okay. I, I d- don't do that. You know, yeah. f- uh, you know, um, <laughs> be flexible it's it's okay yeah it's it's all right and i mean the other thing is i know i know i know this is contrary to everything you've probably ever read uh podcast listeners Mm -hmm. enjoy the regularity right every Mm -hmm. other tuesday you can listen to my show right Mm -hmm. every monday and thursday i know Marin's gonna have a new episode but Podcast listeners are also very understanding. And Mm -hmm. if something ever came up, I don't think anybody's going to bother me because I missed a Tuesday, right? Like like your mental health is still, and and your actual health is still fairly important. And whether the podcast listeners reach out to you and tell you that or not, they are understanding. And as long as you tell them like on, you know, if, if Twitter's your platform, just be like, Hey guys, we missed an episode. Like they are fine with that. Like there's a, that's the other thing, I guess we, as creators, we -hmm. put an undue pressure on ourselves. Like I think I would be harder on myself for missing a Thursday for the blog or a Tuesday for the podcast than any of my audience would be. Mm -hmm. That's a horrible thing. (laughs) Cause like I'm putting extra on me. Right. They're not doing that. I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. So, I guess be a little nicer to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so those are the two. See if you can do everything in your one so you don't start creating pop-up other shows. And mm-hmm. if you need a break, take it. And, you, you know, this is the benefit. You have a co-host. And if yeah. you can find a way to do, you know, either an interview show where only one of you is there so somebody can take a week off or a solo episode, so, like... You have these things. And then I guess the third piece, because why not give three, is if you can Mm -hmm. and you're really a stickler for like, well, I don't want to miss a week. Try and find like an evergreen topic that you can record and have in your back pocket. Have an episode that's already there. As an example, I have an episode that I have recorded with a good friend of mine I don't know when it will air, but it will probably air either when I feel like it or when I miss out, when a guest cancels on me last minute. I have that. I also try and work ahead, right? Yeah. Um, But I always have a back pocket episode. Also, every 25-ish episodes, I do an episode of collected one final questions so that Mm -hmm. I save until I need it um, as well. So like, there, there are ways to reuse content to... Um, but I always try and have something in my back pocket just so I can weather the storm. Right. So like mm-hmm. I can still be hard on myself, but at the same time, I'm not like, Oh, I have to put out something tomorrow. It's like, well, I have this whole episode basically ready to go. That's just been collecting dust waiting for this opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's something really good to think about. I did not think about that. Yeah. There's, uh, uh, um, you know, if you have other questions, I, I've I've got some answers. I, I okay. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 